Hey everyone, Santad here. And if everything goes well, today is a very important day because today is the day that Green Factory 4 Special is finally released on Xbox, Steam, and PlayStation. Um, so if you're at all interested in playing these games, I strongly, strongly recommend it. Uh, the combat is amazing. The story is like probably the best story in any game I've experienced. Uh, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff to it. So in this video, I'll be giving um, a chat about one great aspect of the games, which is the combat and specifically the weapons um, in a beginner friendly way for those who just started the game uh, with the aforementioned versions of the game. Um, but beyond that, we're going to talk about some more advanced topics. Uh, so we'll first talk about the main weapon types in the game, so all six of them. Uh, then we'll talk about light ore, which is a very interesting and unique thing the game has uh, for changing your weapons up. Then we'll talk about Knock, Dizzy, and Stun, uh, which are rather unappreciated aspects of the game that change a lot of how combat works and how enemies react to your combat, and what that might have to do with fishing poles. Um, and finally, we're going to be talking about elements, um, both what it actually does um, in terms of combat and the special effects it brands you, uh, which is also quite interesting and quite underappreciated, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So first, uh, let's talk about weapons in general. So I'm just gonna head down to my training dummy for most of this video, which will be this apple, uh, this palm. Here he is. Okay, so um, in general, uh, your main, most of your weapons in general work with you press the attack button, which on the Switch is the B button. Uh, in PlayStation, it should be X, and in Xbox, I assume it'll be the A button. Uh, but yeah, so you can repeatedly press the button to unleash your combat um, with many hits in it. Uh, if you press, once you level up a bit, uh, once you press the right shoulder button and your attack button, you can do a dash attack, which is this thrust. And I got a level up for my skill over there. Um, if you hold the attack button, you can do a charge attack, which usually has some extra effect on it. And finally, uh, if you press the button for long enough, you'll do a finisher, which in this case is a spinning attack. So. Um, there's also a few other things you can do. So you will get these things called root abilities, uh, which in this case might be this swing, uh, reaper slash, or this multi-stab attack called million strike, as you can probably hear him say. Um, so the more you play for the game, the more rune abilities you get, and you'll probably find rune abilities you like more and more as the game goes by. Uh, what this means is that you'll probably end up using your basic attack combo, your basic attack string less and less, and rune abilities more and more. Um, this means that the combos probably aren't the most important thing, um, but they are a very nice thing regardless. Um, and weapons also have distinct stats, so different weapons give different stats. Um, of course, each individual weapon is different, but each weapon class has traits. Um, overall, between the stats and the combos, they're relatively balanced for the most part. Um, the balance goes out of whack later on when you start using run abilities more and combos less but there are other ways to balance the um, weapons after that. So for the most part, um, you should be feel absolutely free to use whatever weapon um, style you want, whichever one you find most fun or most cool. Uh, they're all equally viable. This apple keeps hitting me. Okay, so let's start off with the first most basic weapon, which is the short sword, which I'm using right now. Uh, the first short sword is called the broad sword. And so short swords have some very interesting things. Um, so, first of all, the bad thing is it has the lowest attack in the game, uh, in general. Early game they're quite high, but overall they're the lowest. Um, and their range is relatively low, low to average. Um, so I don't hit very far with it. But the good things are it has, it's the only weapon in the game to have full shield bonuses. So this shield has defense plus three, and you can see on the right side of the screen that if I were to equip this small shield, my defense would go up for 862, to 865, so I get the full bonus from the shields. Uh, that is quite nice and unique to the shields of all the normal weapon types. Uh, short swords later also tend to give you some bonus magic attack, which is quite nice if you want to use like some combination of melee attacks and weapon attacks along with magic. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's the weapon stats. Uh, with regards to its combos, they're actually pretty nice. So the combo chain is relatively fast. Um, and it hits like a decently large range, like it's nice and swinging, and you want these swinging attacks. Um, its dash attack is relatively slow, but in general, dash attacks are very slow and not great. 
Uh, so you get this nice thrust attack. And the charge attack is something we'll see often, which is this launch. So it'll launch the enemy in the air, uh, which will leave some openings. So you can launch them in the air and then follow up with a normal combo. Uh, the finisher is this nice uh, spin. Um, and what this does is it, it's multi-hit, so it does a lot of damage. And uh, it knocks them away and knocks them up, so it leaves them open. Uh, with this finisher and with most, fin most finishers, you get what I call super armor. Um, basically, that just means that if you're attacked during the animation, you'll take the damage, but you'll continue with the attack, which is always nice. Um, just try not to die when that's happening, because uh, that would be bad. Okay, so overall, the short sword is quite nice um, for a few reasons. Mainly, it's full shield proficiency and it's fast speed but it loses out in its damage and range. Um, but yeah, the combos are quite nice in general, so it's a nice option for that. Ha, didn't hit me that time. Uh, so the next option is the longsword. Uh, the first longsword is called the claymore, and I'm a bit biased because I love the longsword, uh, but I'll try to keep that bias down. So longsword has quite high attack, usually the second highest, maybe the third highest attack in the game, um, and very large range, as you can see here. Um, I can hit the enemy from pretty far away. Um, it has partial shield bonuses, so what partial shield bonuses means is that if I were to equip my shield, instead of gaining with 3 defense, I would gain half of 3, rounded down usually, which so that's just 1. So you can see, if I were to equip this, I would get 1 defense, up to 863. Um, this is quite nice, it's worse than full shield proficiency, but it's still very nice. Um, because, so if my shield were to grant me resistances, like earth resistance or wind resistance, I would still get the full benefit, uh, which is very, very good. Uh, shields are very nice for these resistances. So partial shield, partial shield proficiency is still very, very good. Um, it doesn't tend to give very many extra stats. Um, some particular long swords, uh, the ones that look like katanas, tend to give you bonus uh, faint attack, which means if you hit the enemy, the enemy has a chance of just dying instantly, which is very, very good. Um, but that's not that's not the case for most longswords, just the ones that look like katanas. Um, but yeah, so stat-wise, longswords are actually very, very nice because of the attack and range. In terms of combat, uh, they're relatively slow. So this is a full combat. Um, so one, two, three. Um, so it's very slow, but very wide range. So good and bad. Bad because it's slow, good because the range is so wide and it swings and you can hit enemies. That, like you aren't even facing. You can hit multiple enemies at once. Um, one thing that's really really bad though is its dash attack. So you can see it's this forward thrust. And so normally, okay, so if I do it the, the normal attack, I can dash right after it relatively fast. So normal attack, dash. Um, if I do the dash attack, I am vulnerable for a long time. So I'm going to dash attack and I'm going to spam the dash button to try and get away. And as you can see, there's this huge opening of the Ryan attack. So yeah, you saw me get hit there. I, there is no way I could dodge out of it. So this dash attack is very, very bad and it's very, very vulnerable. So you really don't want to use this. And this is probably the worst thing about the longsword, um, unfortunately. But I guess it needs to be balanced in some way. Uh, the next thing is a charge attack, which is another launch. Um, I missed that, but okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, so we launch them in the air, which gives me an opening to keep on attacking. Well, I just attack anyways. And the final finisher is just like the short sword, it's the spin attack, multi-hit, uh, in an area, and it knocks and launches the enemies away. <clears throat> so overall, long swords are nice for a nice balance of like range and attack, but they're quite slow, so you need to compensate for that. Um, so the next thing is the shield. I'm sorry, the spear. The spear. Next thing is the spear. And spears are very nice. Their attack is very high, uh, usually saying more slightly worse than a longsword. But their range is very, very large. Uh, it's the largest in the game. So that's the spear's big advantage. Um, they also get partial shield bonus. But in addition to that, they also give you actual defense as well. So this shield already gives me defense plus one. Later, later sorry, this spear gives me defense plus one. Later spears give you even more. And you still get the partial shield benefits, so I still get one defense from my shield. Overall, that's still less than what I would get from the short sword and shield, but it's still nice. Um, as for the combos, so they're much faster than the long sword, as you can see here, but they aren't swinging. Um, so 
So that was a finisher as well. But so basically this means you can only really hit one enemy at a time um, because if there are multiple, you don't have the range, you don't have like the swinging action. Um, but one thing it has my eyes is its dash attack is very, very good. So it's this like kick. Um, and the kick like pushes enemies away and it's very, very fast. So here is my cancel habit. So dash, and the moment the animation finishes, the moment the attack comes out, I can dash away, which makes me very, very safe. Um, this is probably the best dash attack in the game. On the flip side though, its charge attack is very, very bad. So it's this multi-hit stab that knocks enemies away. It doesn't even launch them. So um, it also leaves you quite vulnerable um, because the animation takes so long. So yeah, that's one thing that's not good about it. And finally, the finisher is a very long combo. So it's that spinning attack, followed by the kick, followed by that yellow explosion. Um, let me show you a bit again. Spinning, kick, yellow explosion, slam. <coughs> very dramatic, very over the top. So it's very, very cool. And that's about it. Uh, it's multi-hit, it knocks and launches an enemy, but because it's so long, it doesn't have the wide range, it's not very good. So overall, the spear is quite nice for its range and for its high speed and decent attack, but you can only really hit one enemy at a time. So it's it's not very swinging. It doesn't really hit many enemies. Uh, if you want to hit like one enemy at a time from like a safe distance, relatively fast, uh, spears are for you. If you don't care about the speed so much, long swords are probably more what you'd be interested in. Cool. So next up is the axe and the hammer. So these are under the same category in the forging. Um, they have the exact same weapon combos, but they have slightly different traits. So let's go with the axe first. So, but in general, so axes and hammers have the highest attack in the game, um, higher than any other weapon, but their range is very, very low. Um, they also get partial shield bonuses, and like I said, partial is still very, very good. And so axes tend to give you bonus critical, um, which you can see here. So this one will give me 5% critical, while hammers have bonus stun and dizzy. Uh, as for what those two are, I'll talk about it later after I go through all these weapons, so keep a pin in there. Uh, but yeah, so just keep in mind it has something to do with how enemies respond to your attacks. Okay, so as for the combos, these two have the shortest combo in the game. So it's um, this down slam and the side swing, and that's it. Uh, it's relatively slow, not as slow as the longsword, uh, but it's still quite slow. Um, as you can see, the range is relatively low as well. Um, so it's quite slow, but it, it is what it is. Um, and its dash is also very slow. Sorry, let me show you the dash. Uh, it's this nice like tornado spin, which is very funny. It actually has more hits than the normal like, attack combo. Um, but it's quite nice because it's wide range and multi-hit. But again, you are, um, yeah. What's interesting about this is you can cancel it halfway through. Um, so as you can see there, I land two hits and I can dash out. Um, so yeah, overall the dash becomes very, very nice and it's nice and swinging, so you can do it with like, if your weapon is very long range, you could use that. The charge attack is very, very cool as well. Um, it's this slam into the ground in a huge area which knocks enemies away. Uh, the problem is it's quite slow, but it gives you super armor, um, and it can hit enemies behind you. So I was facing away from the enemy, and I still hit him there, which is quite nice. Um, as for the finisher, uh, let me show you. So it's this like forward spin, forward flip, which is a very, very cool. Um, it's multi-hit, it knocks en enemies and launches them, uh, which is quite nice. But yeah, um, it's probably not the most viable. Uh, probably the best move is just dash attack is very very nice and very funny um, so one thing over there that you can see is if you let the dash attack go all the way through and you don't cancel halfway through um, the cooldown after is very very hard um, so once the last hit comes out you basically need to wait until the whole attack is finished before you can dash out so that's the sort of bad thing about the axe and hammer but overall the axe and hammer is very nice if you want to do high damage um, and you do like this dash attack as well so yeah this along with the spear dash attack is very very nice Spin to win. Uh, but yeah, so axe and hammers are quite nice for damage. Next thing on the list is the dual blades. Um, so let me equip that. So that's the short dagger. Um, so these things are very, very fast. Uh, that's the one unique thing about them. Uh, they're very, very fast. 
Um, their attack is relatively average, um, so it's probably the fourth after the hammer, longsword, spear, you have to do a blades. Um, and it has the lowest range, so tied along with the fists, which I'll get to next. Um, it's not that much lower than the short sword and the um, hammer, but it is slightly lower. Um, but one thing that's very bad about it is it has no shield bonus at all. So as you can see here, my defense would not go out at all if I were to equip the shield, which is quite bad. Um, and it's basically like the shield is completely ignored. Uh, this includes resistances. So as I said before, partial shield bonuses give you full resistances from your shield. Uh, with dual blades and with fists, you get none of it. You completely ignore your shield like it's not even on, uh, which is very, very bad. Um, you can re remedy this. Um, if you upgrade your shield with a dragon scale, uh, your shield will give you partial benefits. So late game is fine, but there just might be some issues with it. Uh, it also gives you bonus magic attack, uh, more than the uh, short sword actually. But yeah, so the main cool thing about the dual blades is it's nice uh, wide swinging uh, combos. So with many, many hits, as you can see there. Um, it has a nice dash attack as well. Uh, it's relatively slow, but not as slow as the other ones, so it's with double slash. Um, and you're let go of it pretty, relatively fast, and it has this nice knockback. So yeah, uh, its charge attack is like the short sword and long sword in that it's a launch, uh, like a kick launch, and you can fall it off with normal attacks when the enemy's in the air, which is very nice. And its finisher is like those as well. It is another tornado spin. Let me, yeah, we are. Tornado spin. Multi-hit area, not 7 meters away. Uh, very, very nice. So dual blades are good if you want to attack very, very fast and be like a flurry of blades. Uh, I quite like them. It used to be one of my favorites. Um, and the final weapon we want to talk about is the fists, which were introduced in Rune Factory 3. Um, mainly new to this game. And here they are. So they have um, slightly lower attack than dual blades, or very similar, depending on where you are in the game. Uh, similarly low range and no shield, so they're quite like a dual blades in that way. Um, they also give you bonus magic attack, defense, and magic defense. Oddly enough, it gives you more than any other weapon, so that's very, very nice. Um, and like the short sword, it's relatively fast, so let me show you. Um, its range isn't as wide as the short sword. Uh, it's just up there, but it shouldn't. Um, yeah, so its range is much like, it's less swinging than the short sword. But the one thing that's unique about it is if the enemy is in the air, you can press the A button to do like a cool slam attack like that, uh, which is very, very cool. Oh no, the apple died. Um, but yeah, so you can finish off an enemy like that, which is very, very nice if you press the A button. And it does a lot of damage that depends on the enemy's HP. So, okay, pick up the key. Cool. Ah, I can't do it again. Ah, I don't want to pick up the bamboo sprout. Okay, cool, there we are. So spam on the ground to do a nice bit of damage. Uh, the dash attack is not slow, so there you can see, relatively fast, very, very good, um, but it doesn't do much. It's just like a cartwheel, very low range as you can see. Um, and charge is this multi-hit attack. Uh, yeah, this was very fanny, funny and fancy roll, uh, which is pretty cool and does some decent damage. Ooh. Um, so it's quite nice in that regards, but it doesn't give any reactions, it doesn't launch or knock them away, which is quite unfortunate because uh, you can only throw enemies if they are like launched or knocked back. Uh, its finisher is honestly quite awkward, so it's this drill like punch kick thing. Um, it's hard to aim, it's hard to hit many enemies at once, but it is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so fists are nice if you want to use the sort of martial arts like um, body slam attacks. Um, I'll show it again. Oh, it's very hard to do. I'm bad at this, I'm bad at this. Um, but yeah, so it's a bit unreliable, I guess. Um, because the range is so short, so it's hard to hit enemies. But yeah, it's very, very cool. Uh, so I did a brief amount of, oh yeah, and you can pick enemies if they're like knocked down like that. To combo with them from pummel to pummel. Uh, but yeah. So I did some brief stats on these weapons. So what I did was I compared the skill you need to forge the weapon. Um, for each different weapon, and I looked at their attack over that range. And what I found is that, well, in blue, you can see the short sword, for example. You see that overall, at the very beginning, the short sword is very high attack compared to every other weapon. 
um, but later on it drops down very rapidly and ends up being uh, the lowest attack weapon in the entire game. Um, so yeah, there's that. But it does have the full shield bonuses, which I've marked by it being a solid line. The weapon with the highest attack is the Axe and Hammer, so it starts off not the highest, but overall through the rest of the game it is the highest, so very very good. Uh, the Longsword and Spear take second and third, they swap places at some point, so they're relatively good. Not as high as the Axe and Hammer, but still very nice. And they get partial shield bonuses, along with the Axe and Hammer, which I've marked with the dashed line. And the dotted lines are the Dual Blades and the Fists, uh, which have no shield bonus and relatively low attack. Um, so they swap places as well, but for the most part, the, but at least towards the end of the game, the uh, fist is higher than the dual blades. Um, but yeah. So, uh, do keep in mind though that, again, these weapons are relatively balanced. Um, and yeah, uh, you can use whichever one you like. Um, I also want to do a brief mention that you can change what your weapons look like. Um, so I call them layered weapons because of Monster Hunter. Um, you can call them transmog as well. Um, but basically all you want to do is you want to um, go to a forge and if you want to make one weapon look like another weapon. So let's say I want to make a... Um, look at these long swords. So we have the cyclone blade that looks, that looks very very cool. Um, but we have the sea cutter that is water element. Um, let's say I just want to make a cyclone blade um, with the stats of a sea cutter, so I want to make my sea cutter look like a cyclone blade. All you need to do is you make your sea cutter, so you make the weapon with the stats you want, then you make the weapon with the appearance you want, and you put the weapon with the stats you want in the recipe for the weapon with the appearance you want. And now I have a cyclone blade um, that looks like a cyclone blade but has the stats of the sea cutter with its water element. Uh, so check out my crafting video for details. I did a whole, I'm doing a whole series about crafting and the first episode talks a lot about making what weapons look like change. But what's more complicated is when we throw in this very cool interesting thing called the Light Ore. So late game you can get the Light Ore just from hammering rocks. Um, so it comes out just by chance and just by luck. Slightly more common in some places, uh, but yeah. Uh, what Light Ore mainly lets you do is it lets you use different weapons uh, in your recipe. So I said before how you can change what weapons look like um, by putting the old weapon in your new weapon recipe. Light Ore lets you do that across different weapon types. So uh, let me give you an example. So let's say I like the uh, hammer. And I like how the hammer has like this huge dizzy and this huge stun. So what I can do is I can make a hammer. And let's say I like the range of a spear. Um, what I can do is I can make a spear. I use this item called the light ore. And then I put my hammer in it. Okay. And what this does is it gives my spear the stats of a hammer. So let me show you that here. We have a spear with the stats of a hammer. And as you can see, it has the nice 10% stun and nice busy. Uh, you can also do some other things. You can, for example, make a um, dual blades with the stats of a spear. Uh, as an example. So there's the light ore and there's the spear. And like I said before, dual blades have very nice range. Um, and daggers are very, very fast. So here, I have a very fast weapons with a very big range. Um, so here's the short dagger with the spear, very nice, very big range. And here's a short dagger without the spear, very small range. So when you use light ore, you use the stats of the old weapon, including the range and shield proficiency. Um, so if I use the shield with my normal daggers, the shield is completely ignored. If I try into the shield with the spear daggers, I get my plus defense. So yeah, uh, so you use the range, shield proficiency, and attacks of the old weapon, as well as sound effects, if you're interested in that. Um, but you use the new weapon's combo, appearance, and skill level, so even though it has the stats of a spear, it has the appearance of a dagger, it has the combos of a dagger, and it uses my dagger's skill level. 
So basically what this means is it's basically like you're using a dagger, you're just using a stats around the weapon. Um, and what this means is that you can basically balance the daggers later on. So like I said, the daggers have relatively bad stats. So low range, low attack. Spears have good range, good attack. If you like the daggers, you could just use the stats of a spear on your dagger and make your daggers very, very good. Um, so I've summarized that a bit here. So if you want to light or weapon from, it's fine to light or weapon from a hammer. Uh, because hammers and axes have the most attack in the game, along with that starting crit, which is very, very nice. Uh, it's also nice to light or away a claymore or another longsword uh, because they have very high attack as well and also very, very good range. Um, some some longswords like the katanas also have faint, which is very, very nice. Uh, spears are the third option, so spears have very long range, as I've said, and pretty decent attack as well. Uh, Short swords you can also light or from. So like I said, you gain shield proficiency. Um, so short swords, sorry, short swords have full shield bonuses. So anything you light or a short sword into will have full shield bonuses, which is very nice and lets you have very high defense in some builds. Uh, fists and dual blades aren't usually very good to light or from uh, because like we said, we have no shield proficiency, the lowest range and the low average attack but you can light ore into them and use their high attack rate. And that's very, very nice and very good. Um, so yes, uh, there are also a few other weapons though. Um, so we have this water pot, we have this fishing pole, and we have this staff. Um, and these three things are very, very good weapons as well, oddly enough. Uh, but as for why, before I get into that, I wanna quickly talk to you about what I call reactions, uh, which are dizzy, stun, and knock. So I teased this a bit before, um, and I'm gonna show you that now. Okay, so first of all, I have this, I've modified this claymore with some upgrade materials to make sure it only does one damage. So this is gonna be consistent. Okay, so look at how the enemy reacts. So they are going to like flinch for a second. If I keep attacking it, if I keep attacking it, if I keep attacking it, um, this might take a bit. This will take a bit, yeah. Eventually they will get dizzy and these um, things will appear as well. But yes, so those little dots that appear and when they stop moving for a while is called dizzy. Um, it shows, so dizzy corresponds to how many hits it makes, it takes to make an enemy dizzy, which is basically what most other games would call a stun. And different weapons have different dizzy amounts. So this Claymore has a dizzy of 12, like we said, the hammer has a huge dizzy of 35, while the axe has a small dizzy of 2. So dizzy is quite nice. Um, stun, okay, uh, let me just show you dizzy, what dizzy can be like. So I have three shirts that I've modified to have, to give me knock, stun, or dizzy. If I equip the dizzy shirt, um, you can see that I can make the enemy dizzy in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well 4 hits, sorry. One, two, three, plus the fourth one I did earlier, and it makes it busy very quickly. So one, two, three, and four, five. Okay, four to five hits, and the enemy will come busy. Before, when I didn't have this shirt that increased my dizzy, it took much longer. So one, two, three, four, sorry, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. It's gonna take a while. Um, but yeah, so this is quite nice in that regard. 11, 12, and now I'm, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, hi Dizzy, there we go. It was like 13 or 14, I think. And yeah, so this is quite nice if you wanna do something like that, but it's probably not the best uh, reaction to use. Uh, so stun, on the other hand, is how long an enemy is under what Smash players might call hit stun, what other games might call flinch. So I have my shirt that increases my stun a lot, and you can see here, if I hit the enemy. Uh, okay, so he's off screen right now, but you can see him do this weird like shaking animation. Yep, there we are. So I hit him and he just stays still for a few seconds, and that is stun. So with high stun, the enemy is just stuck in place after every single hit, as you can see there. Which lets me like land a full combo. I can just instantly combo the enemy while the enemy is stunned. 
and now he's busy. Oh, he was busy, but they knocked him out of it. But yeah, so that's fun. Very, very nice. Um, very good if you build up a lot of it. Uh, and the next one is knock. So knock is how far away the enemy is knocked back when you hit them. So here's my knock shirt. If I knock the enemy, oh, round for now. Okay, so knock basically means I can push the enemy far away when I hit them. Which is nice if you're dealing with multiple enemies. Uh, you can get them all away from you at once and just focus on one at a time. So I can hit that enemy away and rail this one again against the wall. Which is very, very nice. So, what does this have to do with the fishing pole and the water pot? So, let me show you the water pot briefly. So the water pot I have here has 80% stun, um, as along with 15% critical. Uh, so critical ignores enemy's defenses, it's quite nice um, if the enemy has high defense. But the stun means that if I use the water pot, the enemy is vulnerable for a long time. Like we said, this is a hit stun. Um, so, okay, what I'll do is I will go up and I will make a weapon. I'm going to make a longsword. And in the recipe for the longsword, as we said, we can put in a light ore. Put oh, my warp what's in my hand. One minute. Okay. So you can use light ore with farming tools. And that is the cool secret. So water pot, light ore. And now I have a claymore with the stats of a water pot. And now this claymore, as you can see here. Um, has the 80% stun and the 15% crit. Um, I'm going to go into my inventory and I'm going to pull out this nice water longsword as well. Okay, just for another demo. Okay. So, what this water pot longsword does is uh, it has a higher stun rate compared to the normal one, um, but shorter range because water pots have short range. Um, so I've So it has a relatively high stun of the, sorry, that's the wrong one. <clears throat> cool, this is the right one. It has a relatively high stun uh, compared to the normal water claymore. But one thing that's very cool, and the one unique thing about the water pots over every other weapon type, is that the water pot is the only weapon in the game that natively does magic damage with normal attacks. So I'm going to show that to you against this beetle. So beetles have higher defense than magic defense. Okay. So I have these two claymores, both very similar. So we have the water claymore with 22 attack. And we have the water water pot claymore with a no bonus attack. Okay. If I use the normal water claymore and I attack the beetle, I'm going to do 39 damage, 40 damage, 39 damage, yep. so like 39, 40 damage, relatively low. If I change my claymore for the water port claymore, which has lower attack, I do 275 damage, 296 damage, 253 damage. I do a lot higher damage. And the reason for that is what I said. I do magic damage by default, and beetles have higher defense than magic defense. And water pots are unique. So if you wanted to make some sort of like spell sword, or some sort of build that uses magic attacks and melee, uh, you want to use a water pot, and you can either use the water pot by default, or use a light ore to change it into another weapon. Uh, the next interesting thing is the magic shot. So the magic shot is a staff, um, is a late game staff, and that means it has decently high attack, um, and has relatively long range, but it has immensely high dizzy, crit, knock, and stun. So it's nice in that regards, um, just because you can have all those reactions. So you can crit a lot to ignore defense, you knock enemies away, and they have the long stun time. I'm not going to show you that, you can try that out yourself. Um, but yes, so given knock and stun, we've talked about what they are. And finally, the um, fishing pole, uh, which I will show you here. Um, also has low attack like the water pot, but has longer range and has very high knock um, and stun, which is very, very nice. So these three things, the fishing pole, the magic, the fishing pole, 
Um, the water pot and the magic shot are very, very interesting for weapons uh, because you can do those reactions without building it. Uh, you just trade that for attack. Um, the fishing pot and the um, the fishing rod and the water pot are also nice because they give you full shield bonuses. Um, so they're treated as farm tools, and farm tools give you full shield bonuses. So you can see the shield will give me three defense. Um, this might be using like this giant fishing rod. But yeah, so these items are very, very good for that. Uh, and they're very they're actually worth considering for a late game if you want to use them. Of course, you can also do the opposite. You can put like a long sword stats onto a fishing pole if you think onto a fishing pole or onto a water pot if you think that's funny. Um, that's viable as well. Like the water pot has a nice um, charge attack, for example. Let me show you. Um, yeah, I'll just show you that quickly. I will make a spear which has nice long range. And I'll make a water pot. Yeah. Where's it? Water pot. Uh, I'm gonna light ore my spear into that. Um, I'll also actually, I guess I'll quickly show you the magic shot because the magic shot has something interesting to it. Um, let's make it a right hander so I know what I'm looking at and the magic shot. So the cool thing about the magic shot, before I forget, is that if you use it, um, it has funny sound effects uh, and make these turnips appear. So yeah, uh, that's a nice thing with the magic shot. But as for the fishing, as for the um, water pot, as I said, um, so water pots have a nice charge attack, which is this spin. Um, so it's nice range and it's relatively fast. Just can hit enemies all around you with the water pot. So yeah, water pots are pretty interesting and viable and fun weapons because of this. And with these guys, uh, with tools, you can also still use their abilities. So I can do it like swing my water pot around. Um, so yeah, farm tools are viable weapons in this game, oddly enough. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video is going to move away from weapons mainly and into elements. Um, I don't. I think elements are relatively underappreciated in this game, uh, as they are in many games actually. Um, they're very very interesting because not only do enemies have weaknesses and stuff, they also have some really cool extra effects, and they make your attacks colorful. Um, so I'm going to take out my elemental longswords because I love elemental longswords, as people might know if you've seen my channel before. Um, cool. So I should have all my long swords here. I need seven of them. Dark, love, earth, wind, light, fire, and I'm missing my water. So I should have eight of them. There we are. Okay, so I have my eight long swords. So there are eight elements in the game, and they all have, most of them have unique and special effects, along with most of them modifying the attack color. Um, I'm going to go to sleep in game actually, just to make sure I don't get fatigued before the day is up and to make the colors brighter. Okay, so. Um, so, fire is the first element we'll talk about. So, fire has this nice um, red color to it. So, let me equip that now. Okay, cool. So, if you attack with the fire, you get this nice red color. Um, and what fire does that's really, really cool is that fire attacks by default just do more damage, um, even after taking no account resistances. So this palm is neutral to most elements, except for, I think, wind. So if I do the normal claymore, the non-elemental claymore, which is this one, you're gonna see I'm gonna do like 38, 38, yeah, around like 33 to 38 damage um, per hit. If I change up to the fire longsword, which the enemy is still neutral to, I do extra, if I can hit, I do extra damage, 44, 40, 39. So I just do extra damage for nothing uh, with my fire longsword, which is very, very nice. Um, I think it's about 5%. Um, I don't have the actual numbers on this, I just estimated it. Um, but it's enough to be significant. Now on the bottom of this screen, well, bottom of this like PowerPoint, um, I've plotted how many enemies are weak and resistant to each element. 
So in red, you can see how many enemies are weak to it. So about like 17% or so of enemies. Most enemies are neutral to fire. Some enemies are slightly resistant. So I've defined slightly resistant as, I believe, 50% or they take 50% or more damage. So they reduce 50% or less damage from your attacks. Strongly resistant is 50% or more. Immune means they take no damage and green means they absorb damage. So a lot of enemies are weak to it, but most enemies are neutral to it. Uh, so this is just to show, I, I'll compare all these at the end, uh, but yeah, just so you know what it looks like. Okay, so water long swords, like I've shown you before, are blue. And blue is very, very nice. Um, cool, as you can see there. Uh, so what they do is they increase your magic damage by a bit, um, not your physical damage, uh, to my understanding which is very, very nice. Uh, this one is a bit more just because it has higher attack than the other one, but yeah. Um, so that's quite nice for, I guess, if you do want to use like the Claymore build, for example. Sorry, not the Claymore build, the Watering Pot build, for example. Or you want to do some short sword magic stuff. Um, but yeah, it's also, it has fewer things that are weak to it as well, so that's quite unfortunate, but it's quite nice. Next up is Earth. So Earth has this nice brown color, um, brown orange. Where is it? Where's my Earth long sword? There we are. Cool. Uh, as you can see there. But what's interesting about Earth is that um, it doesn't seem to have a special effect that I can tell. Um, people on the internet say it has something to do with like a knock and stun, but I did some testing with like the different shirts and stuff like that to increase my knockback and stun to something that's terminable and I haven't been able to figure out what it actually does. Um, if you know what it does, please let me know. Like, I would be immensely grateful um, because I've been, this is racking my brain. I spent so long preparing for this video trying to figure out what it does. I've asked around, no one seems to know. So if you know, please tell me. But yeah, so Earth is pretty um, nice as well. A nice color, decent, a few things are weak to it, a few things are resistant to it. Uh, next up is Wind, which is a nice green color. Um, Cool. There we are. Um, and the cool thing about wind is that it actually increases your attack speed. Um, it makes your attack slightly faster. So this is my normal combo with the wind longsword. Where did it go actually? Okay. Here's my wind longsword. And here is any other longsword. Uh, there is a noticeable but subtle change in the attack speed. Um, it's probably noticeable as well with Million Strike. Uh, is that the right one? Yep, yeah, cool. So, sorry. So you can hear like how quickly the attacks come out with the wind. Um, with the normal one, it's, it feels a bit slower. Um, it's subtle, but it's there. If you play it a lot, you'll definitely notice. And also, what's interesting is you can actually. Um, change the elements of your tools. Uh, I don't think I briefly talked about this yet, actually. So to actually put elements in your weapons or your tools, very, very simple. Uh, there are two things you can do. One thing is you can just use the crystal when you're making the weapon. So right now I'm gonna make a wind elemental hammer. And to do that, I'm just going to make a hammer. I'm gonna put in a wind crystal. I'm gonna take this out, actually. Cool. I put in a wind crystal and the hammer will automatically be wind elemental. Um, okay, I don't have enough space for that. Okay, I'm gonna make another one and make an earth elemental, for example, by putting on this earth crystal. And so if you're hammering a lot, you can notice that the wind hammer is noticeably faster than the earth hammer. Ooh, nice chest. Um, cool, so I'm gonna go here where there are things to hammer. And the, as you can see, the wind hammer has relatively fast sounding attacks, but the earth hammer is noticeably a bit slower. Ah, oh, there are ladders. Cool. But yeah, so it's a subtle difference, but it is quite nice. Um, and honestly, there's no reason not to increase your, um, not to make your farming tools wind elemental just because they make it faster. 
Uh, so in addition to crafting with the element, you can also upgrade with it. So if you, I look at my water pot, for example, um, so this is the water pot that was a claymore. So I can make that wind elemental by putting in the wind crystal. As you can see there, so now it's wind type. And you can cancel out an element with any other element. So now it's wind type, I can put in a, uh, what's another element? A love crystal. And it'll still cancel out the wind element to be non-elemental. So you can add or remove elements with elemental crystals, either when you're upgrading it or when you're crafting it. Okay. Cool, so with that done, uh, we can bring the talk about the light element. So light element is very, very nice. Um, so this is probably one of the stronger elements in the game. And what it does is, uh, first of all, it's a nice yellow color, as you can see there. But the main cool thing about it is its effect, which is it, that it lets you ignore some of the enemy's defense. As you can see there, I'm doing like 150 damage, 120 damage. Uh, compared to like the 40 damage I was using without the longsword, uh, without the light element. Okay, so what light does, it lets you ignore enemy's defense um, around 10% from what I calculate, um, which is very, very good, uh, especially if the enemy's defense is very similar to your attack. So if they're similar, 10% of their defense is a lot. Um, if your attack is much higher than their defense, a fire element is much better. So it just depends on like the enemy's stats compared to yours. If they're similar, light is stronger. If yours is higher, fire is stronger. But regardless, it gives you a lot of nice extra damage. Um, so I would use that uh, if you want to do more damage against enemies with similar stats to you. Uh, next one is dark. So to do that, I'm gonna quickly pop over to the second dungeon. Um, so I don't think this will be spoilers. I'm just gonna show you like one brief enemy. Uh, which are going to be these very, very annoying turtles. Okay, here's a turtle. Too many turtles. Okay, so here I am with like any other element. If I attack the, if I attack the turtle, it is going to completely ignore my attack and keep on attacking me if I don't want it to. Okay, so the enemy don't, doesn't react at all to my hits. Now, what dark element does uh, is the dark element lets enemies get knocked away but it would want to be reasoned. Okay, so here is, I'm gonna use my rune ability here. You can see that if I use this Reaper Slash attack, the enemy gets knocked up, uh, even though they're turtles. If I use any other element, uh, the enemy completely ignores the Reaper Slash. Okay, and then they're still hitting me and I'm still dying. As you can see there, they're completely ignoring it. But if I go back to dark, they get knocked up in the air. So that makes Dark very, very good against enemies like these turtles that are resistant to being knocked. Um, and in general, that makes it quite nice for fighting groups of enemies at once because you can make sure they pay attention to your attacks so to make sure you're relatively safe. So yeah, so Dark is very nice for normal enemies. Against bosses, not so much because bosses are resistant to knocks anyway. But yeah, so Dark is nice for that. Uh, the next element we'll talk about will be the physical attacks. So physical is non-elemental. Uh, it's boring one that is nothing, so it has no cool effect. Uh, and has these light blue particles. Um, and the last one is the love element. Um, so let me show you that here. So love elements also have no unique color. Um, as you can see there. But the cool thing about love element is apparently uh, if you hit the enemy up to four times, it will make it easier to befriend and tame the monster, which is very, very nice. Um, Combat-wise though, what's really interesting is that they tend to um, not be resisted very much, as you can see by the plot, and many enemies tend to be weak to love. Um, the power of love is very, very strong. But yes, um, so Love Element is very, very good for defeating bosses because of that. Uh, because it does more damage than any other weapon, considering the elemental damage. Um, so yes, um, that's all of the elements. I have summarized them here. So you can see the plot of all of the resistances against normal enemies. Um, so effectively, what's important to talk about is that... Um, so Love and Wind have the most enemies that are weak to it. 
as you can see there. Um, but if you want to just not be resisted, um, you have physical, light, and love um, that has the fewest enemies but resisted to it. So they're good for attacking a wide amount of enemies. But overall though, every element, including non-element, non-elemental, have some enemies that are resistant. So you want to be a bit careful and you probably want to use multiple elements no matter what. You could use like physical and love or like wind and earth or something like that. Um, but that's before you take into account the additional effects. Um, so like we said, love is probably the best element according to this plot, but it has a effect that's not useful in combat. You might want light or wind or fire for that, for example. Bottom line, it all depends on you and what you think is nice. Um, I like the attack speed of the wind, although I admit I was very tempted to use water because I like the color blue. <laughs> it's perfectly up to you. So to fully summarize everything, um, weapons are generally pretty balanced. Um, you use whatever you want. So no matter what weapon type you use, you can get through the game. They're all relatively equal. Rune abilities and a light ore make the game, make the combat much more balanced, especially late game as well. So yes, use whatever you want. Um, you can also use fishing pods, water pots, and stars as weapons because of light ore and because of how enemies react to knock, dizzy, and stun. And finally, elements can be very, very important um, for the extra damage, for the extra effects, and for the nice color. Um, and yes, so that should be all to this video. Um, all about weapons, elements, reactions, and light ore. Um, if you just got Rune Factory, please enjoy it. Um, take your time, get through the game slowly. It is an amazing game. I love it. Um, I will keep getting through my series on crafting. Um, I'm doing a whole series of crafting. This is like a side story to it, just to introduce some stuff before I talk about weapon crafting in the next video. If you're interested in that, please subscribe. Um, and also, I guess, feel free to like and comment. Comment your favorite weapon type and what you like to use the light ore with. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you again for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. And have a nice day wherever you are at.